Hi guys and welcome to DinosaurNutrition.com, your one-stop fitness and supplements website. My name is Paul and today we're going to do day three of a three-day split. So we're going to do shoulders and we're going to do legs. Because we're at the opposite ends of the body, they are two big muscle groups, but you can actually fit them together when you're doing your workout plan. So we're going to start off, as always, with a superset because I love getting that muscle really warmed up. Fatigued, so A, I can't lift as heavy, but B, there's less chance of injury that way. So we're going to start off with a side lateral raise with dumbbells. You can do it on a machine if you've got cables, but we're going to do it with dumbbells. Now, knees soft, okay, back straight. You are going to get some movement, but try to keep it to a minimum. If you want, use a straight edge or a wall and put your back against it. But for us, we're just going to stand here, arms slightly bent. Now the idea is you lift up and twist about shoulder length, about shoulder height, and again, just pull slightly down. Breathe out on the way up, power phase, in on the way down. Out, and in. Out, and in. You'll feel it really start to kick in. Don't be tempted to throw it up unless you're really at the last phase, you're struggling, you want to try to get the last ones out, and it's, you will get a bit of movement then. Once you've got to that, you can either use dumbbells, or for us just using an EZ bar, and I'll show you why in a second. You're going to raise up to eye line, pause, and down again. Arms just slightly bent, slightly soft, up and down. The reason I'm using these EZ bar is I can change the emphasis on the, just the, the, the insertion of the muscle if I want, just by changing grip. Again, so it just gives you different options. And again, exactly the same, when you feel it really kicking in, really burning, so you literally are struggling to get up, have a break, 30 to 45 seconds. If you need to go down the weight, don't worry about that too much. But again, kick in for the next set, and do three, four sets of two pussy. I only do two sets, but I go to absolute failure on every set. So, that's the first stage of the exercise routine, which is the side lateral raise, and then the front bar or dumbbell raise. Okay, let's go to the next exercise. Next exercise, bent over side laterals. So, on the edge of a bench, dumbbells, underneath your quads and your hamstrings, okay? Reach down, again, always with your arms slightly bent, put them together, and then what you're gonna do is take them out and squeeze in. So you feel your shoulder blades almost touching. So you're gonna squeeze them in. Again, try to bend over and keep the back straight because you wanna take the pressure off the back, and your knees are bent, so you, there's less chance of injury. So, again, breathe out and in. So out on the way up, in on the way down. So. Again, don't just let it drop, okay? Don't bounce it. So it's all in control. All in control. Again, use a weight which is most comfortable for you. And when I say comfortable, one that you can manage but you know that it's working. I don't mean one that you do eight but you could have done 15. If that's the case, you need to go up a weight. Remember, Training is all about pushing yourself. It's not about looking around and trying to look good and looking in the mirrors. It's about going in there, getting a sweat on, getting done, and going home. You can drink and you can talk and you can play on your phone in the bar after training. But whilst you're in there, make it productive. The guys and girls with the best bodies are the guys and girls who are most productive in the gym. Okay, let's go to the final set. Unlike a lot of trainers, I actually do my most powerful movement last. And there's a reason for that is because I don't want to get injured. Gone are the days where I would lift really, really massively heavy poundages. Because I don't need to. Because I can get the same intensity by pre-fatiguing the muscle. So I've hit it in three different phases so far. So the last phase is the power phase. I don't need to go as heavy, but I'm actually working at exactly the same intensity as I would if I was doing it in, in the first way. It's just that my muscles are already tired out. So, this is dumbbell press. 
Stop your dumbbells together. Some people learn to go down halfway. I like full maximum muscle fibre recruitment. So I'll bring them down and up. Down and up. And again, you can do it on the Smith machine, so don't worry. You know, you, remember you work to whatever equipment you've got. Down and up. A good one is the Arnold press, and I like this one because it actually recruits more muscle fibre. So you bring it down, twist, and up. It takes a lot of control, and it's really difficult the heavier you go. Down, out with your breath, in with your breath, out with your breath. Now, for most people, you have a training partner. So what happens is, as they come down, they'll just gently nudge your elbows for the last few. Okay, don't get them to do it all the way through because you're not working then, because the idea is that you're doing the majority of the work. So, shoulders are now done. Okay, so you've done side laterals, you've done fronts, you've done rears, and you've done presses. So you've hit all the facets of the shoulder muscle. So let's now, quick drink, quick rest, let's set it up. And let's do legs. last set of exercises and the last muscle group that we need to incorporate into this three day split is legs. Probably the most underutilized muscle group in the gym. If you walk around, guys with great big arms, great big chest, little, little um, bits of cotton sticking out the shorts because they don't do legs. Again, in terms of body symmetry, in terms of strength, in terms of reducing injury, your legs are as important as your biceps as, as they are your abdominals. So we're going to start off with leg extensions. As you can see, I've not got the world's most expensive piece of kit. It's a home use piece of kit, but wrap it up with the 20s, fill it up, and it can be as heavy as anything you're going to lift in the uh, in a you know really expensive gym. So again, back nice and straight. So you're relaxing the upper body, and then you're just going to take as big a range as you can. So you're going to take it as far up as you can. Try not to lock out slightly, so just take it under the straight. So you take it up and down. And again, don't let it come down because every time it comes down it's resting. So you always want it under pressure, under tension. Take it up and down. Fill it right up those quad muscles. Breathing out on power, in on the negative. And the negative is still under control. So take it up and down so your feet start to burn in there. And again, it's up to you. You do eights, it's really heavy, you do fours. If it's lighter, do a set of 20. The workout is entirely yours. So taking it all the way. Now some people will actually turn their toes out when they do it and they find that it takes less pressure off the knees. I'm not convinced, but try it. You know, it, you know, it works for some people, not for everybody. Again, just taking them out. And in. Just little tips you'll pick up in the gym, some are fastest, but some are true. Okay, once you've done that, again, very short recoveries, bang it out again, two, three, four times, whatever many you want, and then let's do hamstring like curls. Like all muscles in the body, if you're going to do the front, you've got to do the back. So we're going to do hamstrings now. So again, lying flat, put the muscle in, in tension now, so I've slightly lift, raised it, and then squeeze it all the way up. All the way down. So again, getting full muscle fibre recruitment all the way up, all the way down. Feeling it, taking it up and down. Feeling it really kick in. Again, breathe out on the way up, in on the way down. Out on the way up, in on the way down. Again, hamstrings no different than any other muscle. Make sure you feel it really burn. And if you've got a training partner, again, just the last phase, just get it, squeeze it up so it hits the back of the buttocks. Okay, let's do the final set. Next to last exercise is squats. Now, I'm not a big believer in going all the way down because I've, I never have done. My knees at 43 are perfect. And in everyday life, when do I do that in a power phase? So for me, it's not a massive issue. If you're you know, a world-class bodybuilder, then yeah, because like I was saying with the movements, you want absolute muscle fibre recruitment. And the same goes for squats, but for us, for the general gym guy, then 90 degrees is sufficient. Also, I tend not to have it there in the, the neck. I have it across 
the back of the traps out, the back of the shoulders. Therefore, don't usually need any padding. Take feet, I have them about or just beyond shoulder width apart, with the toes slightly pointing out, out from the heels. And again, so you take it down, arse goes back and up. Again, chest comes down over the knees. There. And again, I've got the stops in, so if anything does happen, I'm safe. But again, you see guys, and oh, it shocks me, doing it onto benches. If you slip, if you tire, and you drop that down, weight down, you will crush your spine. No two ways about it. So always safety. Down. Again, it's all in control. Again, try not to lock the knees out, so it's always in tension. After a while, you won't need to look sideways, you'll know exactly how far you're going down. And again, put my dinosaur nutrition belt on, just again, because you don't want to injure the back, you don't want to put any strain or pressure on the back. And it just gives you that vital support that you need. Okay, last thing, calves. Now this is an interesting one on my gym equipment. Let's see what we can do. Now, as precarious as this looks, I've got my stops in, so it's all nice and safe. So press and rest on there. I've not got the world's greatest equipment. I've got, you know, a nice Smith machine, but I've got nothing for calves. So with this one, raise it up again, and just easily do your calves. Pressing up and down again, getting really good muscle fibre recruitment because I'm able to get down and up, I'm able to plate load it so I can get as heavy as possible and if I fail or it slips, it drops onto there. Another way of doing it is just getting a block of wood, holding onto something and then using dumbbells. You can use it by on the squat rack again on a piece of wood but I just prefer this, it works for me and that's all it takes. So, legs, leg extensions hamstring curls, squats, and then finish off with calves. So you've hit every single facet of the muscle. You've done power and strength moves, you've done shaping moves as well. Again, change your foot position at any stage if you want to hit a different part of the muscle. So every couple of weeks, just a simple change like that can bring in different muscle fiber recruitment, can shock your body. Now, last thing, as we always say, before I started, I had my creatine, Tribulus and protein. It's not finished. Now I'm going to take my glutamine, my creatine again, and my protein. What we've developed at Dinosaur Nutrition is a blend, an all in one, which has got HMB, creatine, glutamine, and protein into it. So you've not got to mix it all together. It's all in one simple shake. It's dead easy. Put it in your shake, you shake it up, take it, jobs are good. You've got 45 minute golden window to do it in. So as soon as you finish your gym, drink it and you're done. As we always say, visit us at www.dinosaurnutrition.com. My name is Paul and I'll speak to you soon. Bye now.